Welcome to our spoiler discussion of Captain Marvel, and here we're going to be talking more into detail of the film after um, of what we didn't talk about in our, our regular non-spoiler review. And uh, if, if you haven't seen the film yet, uh, you're welcome to check out our non-spoiler review first, and then once you see it, you can come to this uh, discussion. Now, basically, this film, the way it picks up is, the, the way it starts is that you have uh, Cap Carol Danvers, who actually, the movie starts out where she's actually already on the planet that they have seen the trailers that she's from, uh, which is called... Well, you get the glimpse where she's, yeah, you get that where she's on the planet. Yeah, yeah. and, and then she basically, you, the, you see like this kind of vision that she sees where she she's sees... She's on Earth. Where she's, she's on Earth. And it she looks sees, like a war movie uh, yeah, at first. Yeah, and it shows yeah. Annette Bening like, uh, like wounded and she's, she's shot by this alien type guy mm -hmm. who is like you see in the trailers, um, played by uh, Ben Mendelsohn. And the <clears throat> the the rest the, throughout the the story, she's having to be she's basically being trained by uh, Jude Law for the for the first twenty minutes because yeah. Jude Law is like her mentor on the planet that she comes from to try her. To They're like her space, like space marines, marines. type. Kind of like if you've ever seen Green Lantern or know about Green Lantern, it's kind of yeah. like that where they're yeah. like the the space corps kind of. Basically, people. they protect the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. And throughout the film, they're, they're having to. There's an ongoing war that happens between uh, the Kree that they're from and the scroll, the the scrolls, scrolls yeah. uh, that they have to fight. And they end up going to this planet that basically uh, where they have to get. What were they doing again? They, they're they're going there to infiltrate this uh, leader that of theirs into like. I guess yeah, uh, they find them. Find the leaders because basically they they they're known they're known to destroy, destroy galaxies. galaxies. They go to planets and kill everybody. Yeah. They take over that planet. So basically, they're fighting, trying to stop them. And the uh, reason why they were there is because they were close to Earth, and they think, yeah. okay, now they're gonna try to do it to Earth. And so they're fighting them and all, you know, whatnot and shit. You know, they start fighting. Not really have to go in great detail, detail, but she falls down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when we get to see that she basically landed in the land blockbuster, blockbuster yeah. which was, was the start of our nineties throwback. And yeah. I, I thought it was really funny how she drops in there and she start she blasted this poster of James Bond or whatever, thinking it was somebody else. Comes at the right time when they just announced that the very final blockbuster known to man is actually gonna close its doors. Yep. And there's only two yep. there's actually one, one left, left now. one left and that's in yeah. uh, Oregon. The one in Australia closed. Yeah. Yeah. So. And no, it ain't in Oregon. It's in Alaska. Oh, is it? I thought it was in Oregon. Alaska. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, and it makes me wish I can go back to in the 90s and go to Blockbuster again. Yeah. But anyway, uh, she ends up. Yeah, she basically, she basically ends up. She's um, basically after the scrolls right now. Yeah. Yeah. And having to evade them as well. And we, the scrolls are also, in, the, if you've seen the trailers, they, they can basically shape shift into other people. Yeah. And so when they arrive to Earth, they start taking the form of different people and that come to place. You see where she hits the old lady. Yeah. She's after a jock that he, one yeah. of them turns into. And, and then you yeah. got uh, one of them taking the form of Ben Middleson and talking in his 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 usual American accent. I mean, this his character that he uh, portrays is basically acting, posing as the boss of Nick Fury, and that's when yeah. Nick Fury arrives and asking her questions about what's going on. And already from the get go, yeah. the fucking de age effects they use for him, like they're outstanding. Yeah. yeah, he gets a call, which I don't understand. Uh, well, I could kind of understand. They said something went through a building. Yeah. Uh, so he's gonna be called because of you know. Yeah. At first, it, well, yeah. it threw me off with. At like, first, why would like, you be there? Well, what threw me off was I, at first I thought maybe he was just working in like you know FBI or some type of force that was investigating some stuff, like maybe he was working in the regular police force. But yeah. then we actually find out later on that he's actually part of the Shield, Shield operation. Yeah. So we didn't really get much of backstory in that, which was disappointing because this movie is where we get to see all the backstory of Nick Fury because we never really get that yeah. hardly because we get to see what happens to the Eye and yeah, all that which stuff. We'll get to that later, but. We didn't really get. He's already a shield right yeah, now, so it's like, man. So we don't get like a mixture of both yeah, of y'all's that's backgrounds. What I'm saying because that would have been clever if he was just a cop who had this thought. I want to create a thing called shield. That's what I'm saying. That would have been interesting. Yeah, you know, if he was a regular cop, I could see him do that because it would have yeah. made sense for him to show up like that out of the blue. But yeah. anyway, um, he ends up trying to you know get information out of her, and she tells him about these weird uh, scroll people that are talk that have come there. And then they get attacked by them, and from 
people trying to the them trying to go after Captain Marvel, and she ends up going on the run. And basically, throughout the rest of the story, she's going to look for the Doctor that she sees in the yep, vision. She's played by yep. Anna Benny because she's having visions of like this uh, this woman who gave her the gave powers. her the powers, and she right. start gets glimpses of her past after. Uh, the the uh, the scrolls took her, and then she went to Earth. Yeah, and then so she went to Earth to recover her past as well. Yeah, and that's another problem I have too because when the when they go through the the alterations with her, like well, when they go through like her past and everything, it's very like Short just lived. quick scenes. Like they didn't really touch base on them. Yeah, they're you know? basically trying to open up another plot with her after scrolls, but then wanting to find her past. It's like one or the other is getting ignored. Yeah, mainly, it's, it's mainly the it's past very, one. It's is not very ignored. coherent. You yeah, know? it's very going all over the place. Yeah, um, and so throughout the film, she ends up out abruptly. Out of the blue, meets coincidentally sees Nick Fury at this bar that yeah. she went to because uh, she's going, she's recollecting on her past, and she ends up having to team up with him. They end up going to Shield, yeah. and then that's when they, the the bad guys, end up finding out where they are at, and uh, that's when we get that scene where he where he meets the cat, and it's named uh, Goose, mm. and, yeah, and. Um, and throughout the rest of the film, they have to basically continue to look for that darker. And then throughout the story, she ends up finding another person of her past. She's taken two, and it's this one girl that yeah. she was. There was a backstory where she saw where she's seeing where she was flying a plane when they crashed, and then there was another girl with her, and it was like her best friend. Yeah. And that girl, I, I forgot how they con. They contracted her. They found her. Contacted her. Well, um, she saw her. I think it was in that picture, or it was. I forgot. It was. Yeah, there was a thing that happened like at this Area Fifty One looking thing. Yeah. And where they're and they're trying to look for the doctor there, and then they end up getting like backstabbed, and they end up had to break out of that place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, anyways, they find out where her best friend is, and uh, something to do with investigating. They. They go and they find out there was another girl, so they contact her, and it comes to find out that's her best friend, and that's when we get the scrolls show up. Yeah, and and then there's a twist right here where the scrolls are actually good. Yeah, and because not bad. they just they're yeah. actually saying that um, there's we are not the bad ones. The, the You're bad killing ones. all our people. They're killing all our people, for and they want to steal your your energy and all that stuff, and then it ends up you know they end up showing proof like through like the meta, the the. The records out of the box when the the day of the plane crash, yeah. they were able to hear like the woman who's doing that shit to her brain, and then fucking uh J Jude Law and all them are bad. Yeah, yeah. and that's 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 really, probably that, the only good that, thing. Yeah, that's I like what, that's the one story. of the things that I like. They took a spin on because if you yeah. notice in the trailers, they hardly even fucking promote Jude Law as the like like who his character is. Like, cause yeah. I I just thought from the get go that he was just basically the typical mentor type that was trainer and stuff. Kind of like Captain Kinda like America. Yeah, or with, not, uh, not Captain America, but uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, had a mentor. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's what it reminded yeah. me of, and uh, yeah, it turns out that he's the bad guy the whole time. So I, I like that they took a spin on it because later on in the film they have to work with the scrolls now to try to get back the tesseract, yeah. and they discover the. T if you remember, the tesseract was from the Avengers. Yep. Uh, that's what actually bring. What that's one of the the stones they used to bring in Thanos. Yep. And the tesseract they actually find at this uh, at this space station, and uh, that's when we actually discover too that the scrolls are actually they have refugees that were there too. Yeah. And, and you actually feel bad, bad for, for the them. guy. Yeah. yeah, like I thought it was that was one of the few emotional parts that got to me. Yeah, where, it was family and all that yeah. hiding. And they, you find out that these nat looking creatures are actually good. And then you come to find out Jude Law's working with the Roman. If you remember from Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty. Which cool. is Thanos's people? Yeah, because they also have that other guy yeah. that was in Guardians of the Galaxy, the Digimon Hanzu guy. I can't pronounce his yeah. name, but that guy, if you remember him, he he the guy that guy worked for Ronin in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. yeah, and so that was cool that they made an appearance with him, and then them, you know, tying into that. Yeah, and basically they have to end up uh, escaping after Jude Law's character shows up. And that's when we have that all-out battle that takes place, where it's set to uh, just a girl by No Doubt, which I thought was kind of a weird 
vibe, but I get the 90s right. feel they were going for. There's 90 things, like I was it, want to explain a little bit more on this one. There's 90 themes in this film, but sometimes it does feel forced. Yeah. Like the Nirvana thing did not fit Come as in that are, scene. Yeah, we're just, It really did not fit that scene. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah. make sense. The 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 Because the song they played with Just Girl, I get why they chose that song. Yeah. Because, you know, she's a woman and she's... It's about herself, basically. Yeah. Um, and but it's just there's certain references that they do throughout the, the film that make '90s that are just there, you know, just for nostalgic. The only problem that really hurts this film is basically what we can f just go ahead and finish the story. Basically, she's now like she's on invulnerability. Right, yeah. Mode. Oh, Julok captures her and um, captures them because they tricked them on that ship. Yeah. Basically, she's able. Suddenly, just like oh, it, this whole entire time you could have done that. Like she, you know how those movies where they get the superhero where they they metaphor some kind of like where like, she had like I this weird, power, yeah, like, yeah she had like this implant like, she, like no like no I'm saying like how every superhero film like a lot of them are doing that like where the girl has like says some, I've I, like gains momentum yeah and says like some dumb shit like I'm trying to think how how to say it. But kind of like how it, she like, she goes, uh, I've had my tan hands tied all my life. Now I'm going to let them free. I'm like, yeah. so, met that, so you could have just said that metaphor shit to yourself and then boom, you're, yeah. you're that powerful. It, I mean, yeah. I get that. That's the, my I, problem. Yeah. I get the progression these. they want to do with her to yeah. try to get her pass back and everything. But the way that it comes off, it feels like very conventional and very and something very that could be done yeah. so fucking earlier in the film that it kind of yeah. makes it very in a way not i mean yeah very kind of a little bit anticlimactic yeah because when she becomes this when she could have done it from the start <laughs> kind of pointless from the rest of it. i don't see how she was able to if they can take her away her powers i don't understand how like she was able to override him in two seconds anyways. Yeah. That makes the vulnerability gone. That's that. what I'm saying. Yeah. And and then after that, like we mentioned in our non spoiler, she's just unstoppable at this yeah, point. Yeah, she starts like going like taking Like the out Romans? She killed them in like two seconds. Yeah. She went through their damn ship. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you don't damn, need, you don't Thanos need fucking, is fucked. Yeah, it's, you don't even need yeah. Thanos. I mean, if she can handle all this shit. You no, know. this is what it needs to do. In game, the credits, you know, like the movie's about to start, and then show her picture, and it's over with. Yeah. If they go, they have to give her a vulnerability. They, they need to, because yeah. knowing that Thanos is the strongest guy, there's no fucking way that she can take him on. That's that going to make Thanos look like a fuck. If they write Thanos that bad in this one, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Yeah. It's really got to create some vulnerability. No offense to her, no superhero should have all the powers. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. But really, it makes the movie kind of... I get why, because in the comments they said, well, we got to save her for last because she's too damn powerful. Yeah. I get that, but... To it, be it's almost like like this be. film. It, it, yeah. and I've heard it from some reviewers. I, get, I agree to a certain extent. It's basically a fill-in movie while we're waiting for Endgame. Yeah. Because this is a film that we have to get set up in order to introduce the character of Captain Marvel. Yeah. And while, like you said, I why am is, glad why they, we they welcomed her right into this universe. Us. That finally, and I'm glad yeah. that they at least you know tried with her story. It's just that the way it comes off, it becomes a little too unconventional mm -hmm. and it, it feels like a you know a filler type movie while we're waiting for the next movie yeah you know but even though the movie's still good it's still if it, it becomes still too standard yeah it, 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 overall it becomes very standard um it's still good. All the Marvel films are good in their own way. Oh, and we got to mention this. Yeah. Uh, the way that we also discover how Nick Fury gets his eye out. Um, yeah. This was something I kind of predicted they were going to do, but the way they did it, I was kind of like, that's weird. Why would that's they go all, with that? That's what that's really one. Out. He gets a little scratched yeah. by the cat, and this is because earlier in the film, the cat is able to have like these weird tentacles come out, kind of like off yeah. of Blade 2. Um and when it happens, I'm like, okay, I get yeah. why they would wanted to do that as a joke, but I could have sworn yeah. Nick Fury could have gotten like battle damage or something with yeah. the battle, and and he explains to Coulson that yeah, 
uh, I can't confirm or deny that happened. That I was in in battle when that when yeah. I lost this. Yeah. Because and then he says the little well, they, thing over the it. The guy wanted to make it sound like didn't one of them like Creed guys rip your eye out for like whatever. Yeah. Because uh, you wouldn't give him up the test the Tesla Tesseract. Yeah, Tesseract. And he goes. He doesn't want to admit it was a fucking cat that did it. Yeah. <laughs> now I did laugh at one fucking scene, that part where it, uh, it kind of reminded me of Longest Yard, where the cat it was like badass, yeah. and then him he was the weakest of them. He goes, yeah. "Come on, man, I gotta be stronger." <laughs> yeah. He was ranked the weakest there. Yeah. <laughs> you remember in Longest Yard they did that? Yeah, I remember. Um, some like weak person got a five star, and then Chris Rock got like half a star. <laughs> he's like, "Come on, I gotta kill somebody to get my rep up." <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. I it, did the comedy in the yeah, film. Yeah, comedy is, great. is pretty great. Yeah. And and then in the end, it's also we revealed we revealed that um, basically she gets her outfit based on the because earlier in the film she we discover her past that she also had a relationship with her friends and her friend's daughter mm -hmm. and her her daughter creates her the gives her the idea for a new suit that she wears which i thought was cool yeah. um, and then basically in the end she has to end up leaving to go after the next uh people after she sends Jew law back to the the planet where they came from and they he, to send a message that he's they're going after him so the, yeah, the next pe the people the, yeah. the planet so it's assumed that she's corrupt. going after ronan basically possibly. hitting the uh corrupt government yeah and, stuff, and so. also like it possibly tied into guardians of the galaxy because yeah, Ronan's crew show up in that film later. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they end we up get the end of cr end credits. In the mid end credits, see where it shows the the, the tie into in game, where it yeah. shows that if you remember the end of Infinity War, it shows the beeper that he uh, Nick Fury had. Well, the, right before he vanished. Right before he vanished. Um, the the rest of the crew, uh, Captain America and all of them, they end up getting a hold of it, and they they find out that it goes off, mm. and uh, all of a sudden they're asking, you know, where where's she gonna be at or whatever. Or well, they don't know what the they fuck it is. Though. They don't know what it is. It's basically, not, yeah. Know. And pretty much, that's when we see that she just shows up out of ordinary, out of nowhere, and she's asking, "Where's Fury?" Yeah, you know. And then it cuts to black. So yeah. I thought that was a great tie-in, leading directly to Endgame. Yeah. Um, and then apparently there's also another end credit scene, but we didn't see this where the. Uh, as we walked out before the next one came on, yeah, there was the uh, there was another scene where it shows the cat actually is on like Nick Fury's desk, and it shows him uh, getting uh, unleashing the Tesseract on his desk. Yeah, apparently. So, yeah. So overall, yeah, this movie, like I said, it is good, but it definitely has its share of problem. It, it was. It was definitely kind of like one of the more, I don't want to say weaker, but one of my lesser favorites yeah, of the or favorites, Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe. But yeah. it, it was still good overall. It's uh, They're all good in their own way. Yeah. So, so, like I said, the performances are good. The comedy's good, good. with what they do. Yes. And the, the, the nostalgia's there. And the, the stuff that they do try to do with the story. Of, and Brie did good. Yeah. She did good. And yeah. the the stuff with the villains I thought was a nice, was a nice uh, turn. Yeah. And everything, so but the villain still is weak. Yeah, <laughs> yet the twist is good. Yeah, yeah. So overall, like I, I do recommend it, but it's yeah. definitely m one of my lesser favorites. Yeah, so definitely. Once again, favorite. it's a uh, low compelling grade on the film for you. Yeah, Twitter. low compelling grade. Fair enough. For those of you who have also seen Captain Marvel, let us know in the comments below what you thought about it and the other Marvel Cinematic Universe films. And if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like and subscribe to our channel and check out some other views here and on our website at filmfreaks.com. And we'll be seeing you in our next review. We'll see later. you later. All right.